Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today I will talk about how can you grow as a software engineer and what are the tips and tricks and frameworks you can put in place in order to ensure that you are growing and learning new things as a software engineer. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Zia. I'm a software engineer at Twitter and I talk about technical interviews, software engineering and technologies in general on this channel. All right, let's get into it. In today's world, being a software engineer is a highly, 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 highly challenging career. The reason is that technologies are changing so quickly on a day-to-day -day basis. Whatever that you learned a year ago might not be relevant today. For example, look at Ruby on Rails. A couple years ago, it was highly popular, right? Twitter was built on Ruby on Rails. But look at where Ruby on Rails is today. Twitter doesn't use Ruby on Rails anymore. A couple of years ago, Ruby on Rails was this big rat hot thing where everyone was trying to get on there. Today, you don't kind of see that as much. Today, they're kind of learning new frameworks, new technologies, React Native, for example, Scala, Go, Python, right? There are a lot of new technologies that are coming out on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just impossible for you as a software engineer to learn all those things, ensure that you are up to date. Well, is it? In today's conversation, I will talk a little bit about how I introduce frameworks to my day-to-day -day in order to ensure that I am still learning and growing as a software engineer and how you can do that as well for your career. So one of the things that I believe most in order to be a good software engineer is first, you need to continuously learn and experience new projects, new problems, so that you can come up with new solutions to those problems. As a software engineer, what's most important to me isn't necessarily the technology that you are interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. Because I think, personally, technologies change all the time, but the skills, the way you think about the problems and how you handle those problems, they don't change too much. That's the core of it, right? The core skill set you need in order to solve those problems remain the same throughout time. The ability to convey, to communicate tough technical problems, I think that's a really critical skill to have. You have to practice and learn that in order to communicate well, not just with your peers, but with your managers, and then from with stakeholders as well. Okay. That's an example of a skill that you have to pick up that might be more timeless compared to learning, for example, a new programming language. Okay. With that said, how can we introduce frameworks to ensure that we as software engineers are learning and growing on every single day? Here, I want to introduce a framework that I've learned recently from a book called High Performance. Okay? So in that book, it structures learning or growth as a three step or three different dimensions of how you can learn. First thing is, is now the framework, I call it E, experience, F for feedback, and S, structured learning. In that book, it recommended that you should split your time in the following ways. 70% of your learning should come from experience, 20% on feedback or one-on-ones, and the remaining 10% on structured learning. For example, taking classes or courses in order to further your learning. Let's talk about each individual part of it then. Let's talk about experience. What that means is that you should have a experience map of where you want to be. So the way I personally think about this is that I think about where I want to be five years or 10 years from now, what sort of character or what sort of career I want to have. And then I start talking to people, people who have been there or, or are currently there and ask them a question, which is, what do you think are the most important experience that I need in order to get to that position in the future? Now, the people that ask here are extremely critical. I usually only ask people who have already reached there or are on the path of heading in that direction because I imagine that they've already had those sort of experiences in their career and they'll be able to guide me and help me lead me in that right direction. I then ask them, what do you think are the experience that I need in my career in order to get to that next level? From there, I can start mapping out different sort of, sorts of experience 
that I will need to have in order to get to that position. What are experience you might ask here? So an experience could be leading a complex multi-team project. That's an experience. Now that is very different from skills. Okay? In order to achieve that experience, I might need to have different set of skills. For example, the ability to communicate with stakeholders, the ability to come up with a charter for the team, and the ability to handle or plan out sprints. So those are different skills that I need to have in order to reach that experience. So after I come up with my experience map, I start planning out, okay, what are the different things I need to have in my career and how can I talk to my tech lead or my manager in order to plan out those experiences in my career. So that's how I think about experience. Second thing here is one-on-ones or feedback. Now, I've talked to a lot of coworkers and peers in the industry as well, where I usually ask them, what do you do during your one-on-ones? Like, what do you do in your meetings? And I think what I've gotten from that conversation is everyone treats their one-on-ones very differently. Some people take it as feedback for planning out what they need to do next. Some take it as feedback for looking back in the past, what can be improved. And some people take one-on-ones as a way to kind of learn about the other person a little bit more as a way of building relationships. For me personally, I take one-on-ones as a way of building a feedback loop into my experience. So I talk to my mentors and talk to my peers to figure out, hey, what are the areas that I did well? What are the areas I didn't do so well? And how can I, how can I improve on them? I think that's the most value that I derive from having one-on-ones. And that's what I would recommend for a lot of people as well. For example, a more junior engineer coming to the team they might ask me, hey, what do you think I should ask about in one-on-ones? And usually what I would ask them is, talk to them about the problems that you're having, ask for their experience, ask for their advice. How would they mentor you? How would they help guide you so that you can solve those problems in a much more efficient or much better way? Because most of the people that you're doing one-on-ones with, typically they are much more experienced and have been through that path that you're going through right now. So I think that's the most value that you can get from having one-on-ones. Finally, structured learning. So structured learning is, is an extremely important component for any software engineer who's trying to improve themselves. A lot of people that I've talked to think that once you're out of college, that means your formal education has ended and all the learning comes from experience from then on. I don't think that's necessarily true. At Twitter, for example, we have classes called Go Learn, where they prepare classes for software engineers who are looking to learn and pick up new technologies or just kind of learn about what's going on in the company. For example, if you're interested in learning how ads are being served on Twitter, there's a class for it. If you're interested in learning how Linux works, there's a class for it. If you're interested in learning how Python works, there's also a class for it. So a lot of companies, or tech companies at least, they have classes in place to help their employees improve and better themselves in a more structured format. Now, of course, you can expect to learn and improve yourself strictly just from structured learning itself. Sitting in a classroom and maybe writing a few simple Hello World programs, that's not really going to help you be a much better software engineer, but I think the most critical component here is that it gives you exposure and experience and helps you understand what those things are at a really high level so that when it comes time that you have to interact with these different technologies or with these different concepts, at least you have a mental model of how they work and you can apply that using your skills, your experience to solve the problems at hand. So I think with those three components in place, experience, one-on-one feedback, and structured learning, I think that's the best way that you can grow as a software engineer. So that's the framework that I recommend. If you found this video useful, remember to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.